نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يا كريم My dear fellows of the Sant Masjid سلام الله عليكم ورحمته وبركاته I salute you with the salutations of Islam and I, and I, I come from the land of Barakah, from the courtyards of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. I hope that that Barakah and this mercy be, be, be among us all and may you be showered with the guidance and the, and the mercy of Allah on this blessed day of Jumu'ah. And I'd like to take you throughout time to travel back to this auspicious event of the liberation of Baytul Maqdis for the second time in the Islamic history by none other than the leader, the commander, Al-Qa'id, Al-Mudhaffar, Salahuddin, Rahimahullah, Al-Ayyubi. And we are now laying siege on the 20th of September over Jerusalem, about to take it. But the fierce fighting from the 60,000 fighters that have, that have seeked refuge inside that city, these crusades make it very hard. But don't worry, it's not months <coughs> or years, it takes only 12 days. 12 days until the liberation of Baytul Maqdis. Let me stop here and backtrack. Who is this Salah al-Din? Where he comes from? What he did? How did we end up here? Salah al-Din, this righteous man who was born to a family of Mujahideen, a family that was known for their sacrifices for the deen, his family, his father Najmuddin, and his uncle, who had an instrumental impact on his, on his personality and his identity, Shiruko Khan, they migrate from Iraq. And they originate, they are non Arabs. The ones who liberated the Masjid al Aqsa was not an Arab. For the third time, the one who liberates Al Masjid Al Aqsa could also be a non Arab. They hail from Tikrit, they seek refuge to Ibad al Din Zinki, a community society leader at the time, the Zinki family, who had a vision. This man laid out the roadmap of liberating Jerusalem for the second time from the occupation of the Crusades. Imad al-Din Zinki, who worked tirelessly, day in, day out, on how to retrieve Bayt al-Maqdis. For nine decades, Bayt al-Maqdis was impurified. And the sanctity of al-Masjid al-Aqsa was violated the dome of the rock itself was turned into a church and the crosses were all over Al Masjid Al Aqsa. The Masjid prayer hall itself was, was allocated to be the, 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 the washrooms, Azakullah. Corruption was all over that land. However, with a determined <coughs> wind and the strong determination of these people who had Iman in their hearts. They continued campaign in and campaign out by the way. The names I am mentioning are no sultans, are no governors, are no umara, are no imams. They are laymen human beings in the Muslim ummah. In that time it was the Abbasid Khilafah. And in that time the Fatimis took over Egypt. But neither the Abbasid government 
neither the Fatimi government were able to preserve the sanctity of Al-Aqsa. In fact, the Fatimis were the ones who sold Al-Aqsa, sold it to the Crusades. We're talking about grassroots models of success, of how when there is a strong will, there is a way. There is a way to Allah. وَالَّذِينَ اهْتَدَوْا زَادَهُمْ هُدَى وَآتَاهُمْ تَقْوَاهُمْ And those who اهْتَدَى comes from the verb of اِفْتَعَلَى اِفْتَعَى There is a continuation of seeking guidance. And whomsoever continues to seek guidance, what Allah does? زَادَهُمْ هُدَى Allah increases them in abundance of guidance. وَآتَاهُمْ تَقْوَاهُمْ And He will give them piety. Piety. And that, my brothers, was the instrumental weapon that fortified these hearts, that made them break these iron shields and these shields of tyranny. Salah al-Din was born in that environment of his father, his uncle, Inad al-Din who gave them refuge because his father and his uncle saved his life in the previous <coughs> campaign. He welcomed them, he welcomed the Ayyubi family and he gave them a, a, a residence and gave them a piece of land to become part of his small community. Salah al-Din was born into this, this, this generation and this environment that had continuous fikr and that had continuous strategization and continuous passion for Al Masjid Al Aqsa in Jerusalem. My brothers, Imad al Din passes away. And the one who carries the legacy of the Zinki family is Nur al Din. Nur al-Din Zinki, who had done tremendous work leading expeditions, leading campaigns, financing programs and strategies around the area of Jerusalem to unite, to unite Asham and Egypt in preparation of liberating Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. Salah al-Din grew to become a young man and he was the right hand man for his uncle because his father also passed away, Najmuddin. Shuhada, Shuhada, every day there are Shaheeds. Every day there are Shuhada that are selected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَيَتَّخِذَ مِنْكُمْ Shuhada. And he selects from you those Shuhada, those martyrs. Martyrdom isn't just happens to anybody. When a person reaches a level of purification, when a person reaches a level of eligibility to attain the honor of martyrdom, Allah selects him to become a martyr. And so Salah al-Din al Ayyubi, this young man, grew up in this environment filled and surrounded by shaheeds and martyrs and, and the great thinkers and great minds and courageous, chivalrous fighters that were determined on their goal. And that goal was Jerusalem. al baytul Maqdis that was occupied by the Crusades, as I mentioned, for nine decades, 86 years. The Zionist country right now is how much? How old? 65? 60 years? And Masjid Al-Aqsa was occupied once before. And the liberation was august. And the liberation was marvelous. Nur al-Din, the people of Egypt are now begging Nur al-Din to come in and march and, and, and rescue them from the Fatimi governance corruption. And Nur al-Din sends Shirakoh, the uncle of Salah al-Din, along with Salah al-Din, 
and appoints them and gives them directions in this special mission to go to Egypt and to, liber to liberate the Egyptian people. And now, there is hesitancy because the Egyptian people at the time were, 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 were not trustworthy. However, the vision for this leader, Nuruddin, he said, if you don't go, I have to go, personally. So they accepted the order given by their commander. Nuruddin remained leading his forces in Asham, and they marched into Egypt, and they liberated the Egyptian people from the tyranny of the Fatimis and their weak, corrupted governance. And now, in a very gradual approach, Salah al-Din merges and consolidates Egypt with Asham to have this united front, united Muslim Ummah. This was the vision, this was the strategy to, to dissolve our differences, to unite our efforts, to be one strong, powerful body, powerful force against this tyrant enemy. The enemy was not easy. These efforts continue. And during that time, while Salah al-Din is in Egypt, governing Egypt by the order of Nur al-Din, Nur al-Din passes away. Allahu Akbar. The remnants of Nur al-Din in Al-Masjid al-Aqsa is that minbar, minbar that was prepared and erected, that was prepared during the time of Nur al-Din for the liberation of Masjid al-Aqsa. You see, because they were so determined, because they were so focused in their, in their objective, they prepared for it. What have we prepared? What is our objective? Do we even have a vision? Yes, we do. And yes, we have objectives, and we must prepare like our predecessors prepared. They prepared this beautiful limba. The remnants of it is in the museum of Al Masjid Al Aqsa because the Australian extremist Zionists in the 1969 stormed Al Masjid Al Aqsa and burnt Al Aqsa down. That minbar was burnt down. The remnants of it is in the museum. You can see it and touch it. Ikhwati al Ahibba, Salah al Din now is the leader of the Ummah. He was voted in. He was beloved by everyone around him, by the people. He was revered for his courageousness, for his chivalry, for his iman and piety. And by the way, Salah al-Din, what was he? He was a alim. He studied Quran and Hadith and spiritual upliftment with the Mushayikh. He had the Mushayikh and the ulama around him. He empowered the ulama around him. Believe it or not, this was the core, one of the core elements behind Salah al-Din's success, which is the empowerment of the ulama around him. And so the whole society, the whole community received these lights from the ulama and from their knowledge and from their guidance. <coughs> we, can, we, can pick up, we can pick these lessons learned from this experience. And that is why I'm sharing it with you here today in this Jumu'ah, in this blessed gathering at Santin Masjid. For us to ponder and contemplate about this model, a very successful model of how we can regain and we can purify and we maintain the sanctity of Al Masjid Al Aqsa Al Mubarak. <clears throat> Salah al Din, ayyuha al Akhwa, unites the Muslim front throughout Jordan and Sham and Egypt. And the volunteers now are rushing to join this campaign with Salah al Din, to be with him, his brother in arms, 
what a great honor and title. They are all inspired by the ulama to join this expedition towards the Holy Land. And far, far, far away from Al Masjid Al Aqsa to the north, four hour drive to the north, in a locality called Hittin. Hittin. One of the major decisive battles take place. 12,000 Muslims against 60,000 crusade forces that were that united as well to stop the march of Salah al-Din. The ulama of history, they say, Ma'arik al-Islam thalatha. The battles of Islam are summarized into three. Badr, Yarmouk, and Hattin. Meaning that these were the battles that changed the whole paradigm. The geopolitical space was, was, was revolutionized after the onset of these battles. The results, the consequences of these events was tremendously favoring the Muslims. Badr, as you well know, al yarmouk and Hittin. And in Hittin, ayyuha al-Akhwa, courageous fighting <coughs> took place in this mountainous terrain. Clever strategies of instilling fear into the enemy was also placed. Salah al-Din had an objective to capture their magnificent cross, a holy cross that they bring, that they claim some of the wood pieces of the crucifying of Isa السلام, is part of that cross. So he was able to capture that cross and destroy it. So he, he, he destroyed the morale of these forces that dispersed. And so you have the king of Jerusalem who died, who, 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 uh, who was captured as, as, as a prisoner of war. You had governors who flee war criminals that were that were killed in this decisive battle <laughs> is an exemplary event that we should cherish and commemorate after Hattin, look at the strategy of salah al-din he could have went to jerusalem right away because finished the forces are dispersed, they are weak, it's done. It's done, it's known that he is the winner and the Muslims now are able to just capture by the But no, he spends another two, three months, he goes to Akka and Beirut and captures the whole coastal area to basically cut off the supply chain routes from his opponents and also give an opportunity for those who think it's too late to join the campaign and celebrate the success to join. Two months of full control and now Jerusalem is circled. Watch this. After these campaigns, Salahuddin al-Ayyubi, he marches towards Jerusalem. And he settles in the valley and the mount of Silwan. And he sees, by eye and Masjid al-Aqsa al-Mubarak. When you go to Jerusalem, you will go to that lookout where Salah al-Din stood and he saw al Masjid al-Aqsa al-Mubarak. Remember the feelings, the emotions that, that went through their bodies. By the way, now we Muslims, we enter al Masjid al-Aqsa al-Mubarak. Back then, they were not allowed. In, the, in, their, in their crusade occupation. And so this is the first time the Muslims are able to observe, visually inspect their holy masjid and their first qibla. And they are just right there. But the fortified walls of this city is the barrier between them and the masjid. Imagine the feelings. They camp at night and they are engaging in prayers. The oral tradition says that, that each tent, they would have humming sound that comes from these tents. 
Why? Because they are observing Qiyam and Dhikr. What I'd like to share at this point is that Salah al-Din was not just one man. Salah al-Din was a result of institutional work, of multi-generational tradition and, and concern. A project that went from the generation of Imad al-Din to Nur al-Din to Salah al-Din. <coughs> Salah al-Din and a lot of us fall into the mistake of asking for another Salah al-Din. As if one person in our Ummah will just solve the whole problems of the Ummah. We sometimes wishfully think these fantasies that the person will come and the Muslim Ummah is going to be saved forever by one man. That was not the case. Salah al-Din was the aftermath of so much work. Blood and tears that were spent and expended in the efforts towards this campaign. Institutions, ideas, strategies, ventures, thinkers, think tanks that were all in harmony together through generation after generation after generation that led to this successful result. This is the main message of this khutbah, is that we ought to build the environment and the culture of success before wishing for success, before developing these fantasies that a person will come and appear and bring us to this safe haven. And Masjid al-Aqsa will not be liberated and freed by us sitting at home wishfully thinking that something happened, something good will happen at some point of time. We ought to again develop these institutions, develop institutional work and mindset, establish ventures, ideas, and let our children inherit the work that we do and continue the legacy. Let us raise our children in this mindset that we ought to have this collective work set up. That we ought to have this communal struggle and concern <coughs> for us to develop a Salah al-Din. Salah al-Din was a fruit of a process the Ummah undergone a process throughout three, four generations. And the, and the result was Salah al-Din. And it started not by governments, not by policy makers, by grassroots organizations. By the people, from the people, within the people. We have that opportunity to group ourselves together to put our minds together, to collectively come on one platform and establish something great like Salah al-Din. Salah al-Din was a title for something much and far greater. Twelve days of siege. And after that, Al-Quds was liberated. Before that, look at the honorable principles of this honorable man. One of the governors of Philistine, he flew and he flee from the Hittin battle. He flee from the battle. So he wasn't in prison. He comes to Salah al-Din when he is laying siege on the city and he tells him, Ya Salah, I have a wife in there. And I have children. All I ask of you is to let me go in, take them and leave. Because their future and the whole future of the city was unknown by the way. This is war. This is your laying siege. You have 60 fighters in there that were, by the way, they were fighting furiously. Because this is their end. This is the end of them. They were truly fighting with, with all they've got. 
So the future of the city is unknown. And this man, comes, an enemy, comes to him asking for a humanitarian appeal. What does Salah al -Din do? Oh, you flee for more, you're a criminal. Doom. No. He honors this request. But before that, he told him, listen, you've betrayed previous treaties. You have betrayed previous treaties. Give me an oath that when you go, you will take your family and leave that and you will not partake part of this, of this struggle anymore. He said, I give you my oath. I give you my commitment. And he goes in. When he goes in, the leaders inside, they, 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 they try to tell him, no, you are our leader. And he was the most senior officer at the time. You have to lead us. We are in desperate need of your command and leadership. What does this man do? He joins, he joins the war again. And they fight after 12 days. And after furious and courageous fighting and martyrs and bloodshed, the city was almost opened. And now it's finished. They're going to open it. So the opponents, they come to Salah al -Din asking for a peace treaty. They're asking for a peace treaty now. Khalas, they know they're finished. Done. At any moment now, and Salah al -Din targeted the northern part of the city because it was weak. And that was the weak link after assessing the, the field. <coughs> He told them, now you're coming? Now you're coming? We've been fighting for 12 days and you're, now it's finished, there's no. They said, please, we have women and we have children and there were definitely hundreds of thousands of women and children inside. Salah al wanted to show them the strong, the strength of Muslim, that you have been uh, betrayed uh, previous treaties. But then after that, and he had that in his mind, he said, no problem. Anyone who wishes to leave will leave. We peacefully open the city and we peacefully liberate the city. Just like Omar bin Khattab entered, he peacefully went inside. They paid small taxation for any man or woman leaving. They left with no nothing, with yourself and whatever you can carry. You leave. Whoever wants to stay will have to be under the Muslim rule and he did not he did not prohibit them from observing their worship. This is the example of nobility. Nobility in, in, in dealing with matters of struggle. And Masjid al-Aqsa and the city of Jerusalem was liberated once again. And like Fatih Mecca, like when the Prophet ﷺ, the conquest with Mecca and he started demolishing and the, the idols, he entered with his, with his walis of Allah, with his companions, and this group of Fatihin, Allah give this honor to this man to be the person who comes and he purify and Masjid al-Aqsa from all these, you know, uh, idols and temples and all of these dirt and, and filthy uh, 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 and, and filth inside the Masjid al-Aqsa. But he did it in a very noble, peaceful, uh, honorable manner. In fact, inshallah ta'ala, the next Fatih of Masjid al-Aqsa will be as more honorable and as noble. Ta'ala, only if we all, as a collective, as a society, come together and adopt and take ownership of this cause. Barakallah feekum, wa jazakumullahu khayran, wa salli lahumma wa barik, wa an'an ala Sayyidina Muhammad. May Allah make this assembly a blessed one. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assemble us just like this in the Masjid of Al-Aqsa, inside the Dome of the Rock, on the, out, on the courtyards of Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, free and honored. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us and our children and our progeny be from those who take ownership of this cause and work towards it and exert effort and energy towards it. Allahumma ameen. Wa barakallahu feekum. Wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Thank <laughs> you.